Islam has achieved feats of human behavior that no other movement or religion has done in history. Superpowers have tried to get their citizens to quit alcohol, yet Islam achieved it almost instantly. The fitness industry has spent millions of dollars trying to get people to eat less and intermittent fast, yet Islam achieved getting the believers all over the world, of all different ages, to do an entire month of dry fasting. Entire books have been written on consistency and habit, yet Islam has been able to implement the habit of praying five times a day in believers all over the world. So how has Islam been able to achieve this? The answer clearly lies in something which is unique to Islam alone. Full and true accountability. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Al-Anbiya, كل نفس ذائقة الموت ونبلوكم بالشر والخير فتنة وإلينا ترجعون That every soul shall taste death and we will test you with good and evil trials and every single one of you will return to us. We are all returning to Allah to be held accountable. Nobody's going to carry your actions for you and you're not going to be reincarnated to have another go again as a bug or something else. And if Islam has been able to achieve these unprecedented feats and changes in human behavior, why don't we use it for our Arabic language studies or for any other meaningful goal for that matter? So in this video, I want to share with you five ways that you can incorporate accountability into your mastery of the Arabic language. Number one, invest some money. Now, this is awkward for lots of us, but in reality, none of us want to waste our money. I spent a lot of money on my Arabic language degree, and I remember waking up in my morning sometimes thinking, man, I just do not want to go to this early lecture. But then I think to myself, how much has this lecture cost me? And honestly, I am not missing a single one of those lectures if I've spent good hard-earned money on it. Number two, get a teacher whose opinion you actually respect. There is nothing quite as awful as a disappointed teacher. If you have a teacher whose opinion you respect, then you are very, very likely to turn up to your lessons, to do your homework, to want to keep improving, because you really do not want to disappoint your teacher. Number three, learn in a group with other classmates. I find a group size of about two to ten is really ideal. This is really powerful for a number of reasons. Number one, you don't want to fall behind your classmates. Number two, Look, your classmates are depending on you. One of the most high value things that our students on our programs have said is actually having the contributions of the other students. Sometimes you might have a question or you might not realize that you don't understand something until another student actually asks that specific question. Number four, focus on one specific program. When you're doing lots of bits and bobs of different books and programs, it's quite easy to just pick them up and put them down because I'm not doing this one, I'm actually doing this one. And then, oh, maybe I'm actually not going to complete this one, I'll do another one. But when you just focus on one program only, you're held to account a little bit. And you're also motivated by the idea of actually completing something and maybe even achieving a certificate at the end of it. I know, especially in my own Hivs experience, it feels so good to actually complete a whole juz of the Qur'an, to be able to sit down and read an entire juz from start to finish, much more so than being able to quote bits of different surahs throughout the Qur'an. Number five, set and write down a smart and realistic goal on paper. Now, in our digital age, we often don't actually write things down on paper anymore. One of the tragedies about that is that it's very easy to just adjust your goals if they're in a digital format. It's very easy to just say, oh, that time frame doesn't work and just change it. But if you have something written down on paper, it's much harder to do that. So, for example, you could write up on your wall, I will be able to understand 80% of Surah al kaf in 10 weeks. And if that's on paper, be it in your journal, or you write it on paper and put it up on the wall, it's in front of you. You cannot change it. It is something that will hold you accountable throughout your study. Now, all of that seems a little bit difficult for you just to implement in your own life. I mean, where are you going to find two to ten other Arabic students at a similar level to yourself and a teacher who knows one entire program that you can stick to? Well, here at Arabic Unlocked, we've got you. Starting on the 22nd of June this year, this month, we will be starting our third entry of our Quranic Arabic Unlocked intensive. As I'm recording this video, there are currently less than 20 places left on this year's intake of the Quranic Arabic intensive program. So to learn more, to apply and secure your place, click the link in the description below. If you're ready to experience transformative results in just 10 weeks, check the link in the description to apply for our next Quranic Arabic intensive.